Good morning. Today we discuss about the motion in space, velocity and acceleration. We show how two ideas of tangent and normal vectors and curvature can be used in physics to study motion of an object along a space curve, including its velocity and acceleration. Suppose the particle moves through the space so that it is position vector, the time t is r of t. If you look to the figure 1, you can see that for the small values of h, the following vector approximates the direction of the particle moving along the curve r of t. It is magnitude measure the size of the displacement vector per unit time. The vector 1 gives the average velocity over a time interval of length h and its limit if the velocity vector v of t at the time t, which is defined by the following formula. The speed of the particle at the time t is the magnitude of the velocity vector that is modulus of v of t. Thus, the velocity vector is also the tangent vector and points in the direction of the tangent line. This is the appropriate because from 2 we have the modulus of v of t will be equal to the ds divided by dt, the rate of change of distance with respect to time. This divided by t we have to understand as a derivative of the s by t. As in the case of one dimensional motion, the acceleration of the particle is defined as a derivative of the velocity. So, second derivative from r by t equals to the acceleration of the particle. Let's consider example, example one. The position vector of an object moving in a plane is given by following formula. Find it is velocity, speed, and acceleration when t equals to 1 and illustrate geometrically. Solution. The velocity and acceleration at the time t are the following function which we can get by differentiating of r by t. As we see, the derivative of t cubed becomes 3t squared, the derivative of t squared becomes 2t, and the velocity vector is given by the following formula. By differentiating the v by t more, uh, we can get the acceleration at the time t. So 3t squared becomes 60, 2t squared derivative becomes 2. And the speed is the modulus of the vt. So we have to find square root of the first component square plus second component square. So it becomes under root 90 to the power 4 plus 4t square. If we substitute t equals to 1 instead of values of t, we obtain v of 1, 3i plus 2j, a1, 6i plus 2g, and v1 modulus equals to root of 30. The velocity and acceleration vectors are shown in the figure 2. We have to construct the graph of the uh, vector vector function first. After that, at the point 1, we can draw the vectors v1 and a1 based on their coordinates. Okay, uh, let's define instantaneous velocity, instantaneous acceleration, instantaneous speed of the particle at the time t, which defined by the following formulas. Here, t of t is the unit tangent vector and ds by dt is the instantaneous rate of change of the arc length traveled by the particle. Let's consider the following example. Example 2. A particle moves along a circular path such that x equals to 3 cosine t, y equals to 3 sine t. A. Find the instantaneous velocity and speed of the particle at the t. B. Find and sketch the position vector and velocity vector of the particle at t equals to pi over 3. C. Show that the acceleration vector is perpendicular 
to the velocity vector. Solution. A. At the time t, the position vector is r of t, which is we can write as 3 cosine t times i plus 3 sine t times j. So the instantaneous velocity and speed are following, given by following formulas. So v of t equals to dr by dt, which is equals to negative 3 sine t times i plus 3 cosine t j. So negative 3 sine t is the derivative of 3 cosine t, and 3 cosine t is the derivative of 3 sine t. And if we, if we find the modulus of the v of t, it becomes negative 3 sine t squared plus 3 cosine t squared under root, which is equals to 3. B. The graph of the parametric equation is a circle and of radius 3 center at the origin at the time t equals to pi over 3, the position and velocity vectors of the particle have following values, which we can calculate by substituting pi over 3 instead of t in their equations. And the graph, we can see uh, in the following figure, it is a circle centered at the 0 and radius is 3, and the vectors uh, r and v. In the picture, they look like perpendicular, but uh, to be sure that they are really perpendicular, we need to follow next step. At the time t, the acceleration vector is uh, derivative of dv by t, which is negative 3 cosine t, negative 3 sine t. And since uh, a times v, scalar product, we can uh, find scalar product it becomes zero, so acceleration vector is a perpendicular to the velocity vector. Example three, a particle moves such that it is instantaneous velocity equals to V of t to i plus t j minus t square k. Find the coordinates of the particle at the time t equals to one, given that the particle is at the point one to negative three at the time t equals to zero. So this example uh, is in three-dimensional case, and uh, we can see here the functions, uh, vector function contains the functions of the power of the t. Solution. Integrating with respect to t, we have that we integral of v equal will, equal, will be equal to the 2t plus c1 i t squared by 2 plus c2 j c3 minus t cubed by 3k. If we substitute t equals to 0, then we, we obtain r0, which will be c1 i plus c2 j plus c3 k. And it should be equal to the initial, according to the initial uh, condition, should be equal to the i plus 2 j minus 3 k. So equating the corresponding values, we obtain C1 is 1, C2 is 2, and C3 is negative 3. So the position vector will be in the following form. If we substitute instead of T the value 1, we obtain the value of the vector, position vector at the 1. Thus the coordinates of the particle at the time T equals to 1 will be 3, 5 by 3, negative 10 by 3. So with that, uh, we finish our first part uh, in the motion in the space. Thank you.